everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet this chevron Christmas bauble, which is the one that you can now see here uh, on the screen. Uh, this uh, Christmas bauble is fairly easy to work if you've been following along with my seven uh, days of Christmas baubles. You, this is now the fourth, so you will be a pro at uh, doing some of this color work. Now on this one, unlike the other designs that I did, the color work is worked all the way through the bauble. But because we are working continuous rounds, you can see that the ends, they join seamlessly, which gives the ornament just a nice look on the tree. No matter which way it turns, you're going to see this beautiful chevron design. So for this pattern today, you are going to need a copy of the written crochet pattern, which can be found on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. I will provide the direct link for you there in the notes to this video. In that written pattern, you are going to see a color chart such as this one. And uh, for this pattern, you are going to need that chart. I'm not going to go and crochet through the entire chart in this tutorial. I'll give you enough lines so that uh, you get the hang of it and uh, know how to proceed, but then you're going to need that chart to complete it. So you can either download and print it uh, from my blog, richtexturescrochet.com, or you can purchase the PDF version of the pattern and the chart is included with that as well. As well as the written crochet pattern, you're going to need a plastic bauble such as this one. It can be found at many craft stores or one uh, that maybe you have on your tree that you want to upcycle a little bit. This bauble has a 10 inch circumference. Okay, you're also going to need a four millimeter crochet hook and a stitch marker. The colors that I'm going to be using today are this saguaro green, it's the Landscapes yarn by Lion Brand. This is going to be my color B. It is a worsted weight yarn so you can use any worsted weight yarn you choose. Uh, this is um, a little on the lighter side so if you're using sort of a thicker worsted weight yarn it might change your gauge a little bit but uh, so a worsted weight yarn you're going to need two colors you're going to need about 50 yards of each color okay my other color that I'm using is this Acadia color also in the heartland a worsted weight yarn and this is going to be my color a so now that uh, we've gone over all the materials and that we are going to get started crocheting our chevron Christmas bobble Thank you so much for joining me here today. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to check it out. And uh, also I invite you to subscribe. This channel is updated weekly with free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. So for our pattern today, what we are going to do is we're going to start with our color A and we're going to work a magic ring, or you may start by chaining four and then joining with a slip stitch in that first chain to form your loop. So today I'm going to start with just by making a magic ring. And once you have your ring formed, you are going to start by chaining one, and then into that ring work six single crochet stitches. In this pattern, we will not be joining at the end of each round. We're going to be working continuous rounds. So you're going to want to get your stitch marker ready. For round two, you are simply going to place two single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around. What you're going to do is mark that first stitch and then remember to move your stitch marker 
up as your work progresses. So for round two, work two single crochet stitches. And sorry, for this pattern, we are always going to be working in the back loop only. So I'm going to go back here and start my work again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So once you have worked your six single crochet stitches we're going to continue round two by working in the back loop only you'll place two single crochet stitches in each stitch so to find your back loop what you're going to do is take a look at the top of your stitch and you will see this v here the back loop is that horizontal bar that is the furthest away from you so you will in the next stitch insert your hook under that back loop that horizontal bar only and work two single crochet stitches and then mark your first stitch you will continue working in the back loop only and work two single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around at the end of this round you are going to have a total of 12 stitches go. For round three, I'm going to remove my stitch marker for a sec. For round three, in the next stitch, you and working in the back loop only, you're going to work two single crochet stitches, followed by one in the next stitch. Two single crochet stitches in the next stitch, and then one in the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around. And at the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 18 stitches. These are our increase rounds. So each round, we are going to end up with more and more stitches as we go. And it will be in multiples of six. Once you are all the way around, you're ready to begin round four. For round four, working in the back loop only, you're going to work two single crochet stitches in the next stitch. And then work one single crochet in each of the next two. Two single crochet in the next stitch. And one in each of the next at the end of round four you will have worked a total of 24 stitches for round five continue working in the back loop only and you're going to single crochet two stitches into the next stitch followed by one single crochet in each of the next three. Repeat that, two single crochets in the next stitch, always in the back loop only, followed by one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. You're going to continue that all the way around, and at the end of round five, you will have a total of 30 stitches. For round six, working in the back loop only, you're going to single crochet, uh, work two single crochet in the first stitch, followed by one single crochet in each of the next four stitches. Repeat that, two single crochets in the next stitch, followed by one single crochet in each of the next four. You're going to repeat that all the way around, and at the end of this round, round six, you are going to have a total of 36 stitches.
for round seven, you're going to work two single crochets in the back loop only in that next stitch, followed by one single crochet in each of the next five stitches. You're going to repeat that two single crochets in the back loop only of the next stitch, followed by one single crochet in the back loop only of the next five stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around and at the end of this round, you will have a total of 42 stitches. For round eight, you're going to work in the back loop only, work two single crochets in that next stitch, followed by one single crochet in each of the next six stitches. Two single crochet stitches in the next stitch, followed by one in each of the next six, always in the back loop only. You're going to repeat that all the way around and at the end of this round eight, you will have a total of 48 stitches. And this marks the end of our increase rounds. So now by the end of round eight, you will have a piece that looks something like this. You can see that it is starting to curve there a little bit and it just forms a nice uh, bottom to our Christmas ornament. We're now going to start rounds through uh, 9 through to 19 and at this time you're going to want to pull out that color chart that is there included with the written pattern. We're now going to start following this chart and the chart is very simple. For this chart, each of these little squares equals one single crochet stitch. So there are 48 columns here because there are 48 stitches in a round. And then there are 10 rows because there are 10 rows or 10 rounds of these 48 stitches. So when you are looking at your chart, because we are working in continuous rounds and not turning at the end of each round, we are always going to follow our chart in the same direction. Beginning down here with stitch one, uh, box one, one, I am right handed so I'm going to start in this right hand corner and I'm going to uh, take a look at these white squares and these white squares are my color A, the red squares are my color B. So for this Next round, round nine, I will read my chart as I'm going to single crochet, always working in the back loop only, single crochet with my color A in each of the next seven stitches. I will switch to my color B and work one stitch in color B, then work seven stitches in color A, one stitch in color B, and so forth all the way across my row, round, all the way across my row. At the end of my row, I'm going to end with a one single crochet in my color B. So that's how we look at that chart. And then we're going to go back for the next round, round 10. I'm going to go back over here to my right hand side. I'm always going in the same direction and I'm going to start there, but with my color B, then five in color A, three in color B, five in color A, and so forth. So that's how we're going to be reading our chart. You're going to want to hang on to your stitch marker. At this time you won't need your Christmas bauble or anything like that. We're still just working with the fabric. You are going to want to pull out your color B and have it on hand. And uh, I'm going to show you how to switch uh, easily between your two colors. So what we're going to do is it's one single crochet in each stitch. So the first part of my chart says to work in color A, 
one single crochet in each of the first seven stitches. Remember to place your stitch marker back on. There's three, four, five, and six. Now because in my eighth stitch I want to switch to my next color, when I work this seventh stitch in my color A, I'm not going to work the whole stitch in the color A. And the next stitch, my seventh stitch, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, and drop a loop. But I'm not going to complete my single crochet stitch. I'm going to drop my color A. I'm going to pick up my color B and place it on my hook. And I'm going to pull the color B through. I'm now all set to work that next stitch in my color B. So I work my next stitch in my color B, but again I want to switch back to my color A. I'm working over top of both my tail and my other working yarn. I'm going to carry it through. So I'm going to yarn over and drop a loop in my color B, drop my color B again, pick up my working color A, place it on my hook, and pull through those two loops. So you'll see that I have my seven stitches in my color A, and I have one stitch worked in my color B. The chart says to continue work seven more stitches in my color A. As I'm working these stitches, I'm going to work over top of that non-working yarn. So I'm just carrying it under. Uh, the crochet hook size that I've chosen is small enough so that it will make your stitches fairly tight and it will be harder to see that uh, color B showing through. If it is buckling and showing through a little bit, just pull it a little bit tighter so that it's not throw, uh, sh uh, showing through your stitches. So I have one, two, three, four, five, here's six. And now on my seventh stitch, I want to switch to my color B. So on my seventh one, I'm going to insert my hook, drop a loop, drop that color A and pick up my color B and complete the stitch. Work one stitch in my color B, drop the color B, pick up the color A, finish the stitch. Continue on with my chart. Seven stitches in color A followed by one in color B. You're going to continue that all the way around and end with a color B. There's four, five, six, seven, and I'm going to switch to my color B. It may seem a little bit awkward at first, but uh, eventually you sort of get into a good groove uh, and pattern in switching, switching your colors. And I'll just quickly show you the back of my work. There's four, five, six, seven, and switch, and switch back. So if you take a look at the back of your work, it will be quite neat and clean. This is my tail that I kind of wove over and wove in as I went. And this one I will weave in later on, but it's just quite nice and clean. Now I'm not going to see the inside of this bobble. So if I don't want to work over top of uh, these, uh, the non-working yarn, it's not a big problem. Always just make sure that you're not pulling the non-working yarn too tightly or that it's too loose. If it's too loose, it will show through. And if it's too tight, it will pull your stitches together and create a buckle there in your fabric and you don't want that. So go ahead and complete that round and I will meet you back here for round 10. I've now completed my round nine and this is what I have. You can see I have my color A and every once in a while I have a little color B here showing through. So I'm now ready to start nine ten, uh, row 
10, which is row two here on my graph. I'm heading back over to that right hand side. And my graph tells me that the first stitch is with my color B. So I've kept it on my hook from the previous round and I'm going to work one stitch in color B and then switch back to my color A. I'm going to just mark that first stitch. Next, according to my chart, I'm going to work five stitches in my color A. There's one. Again, I'm carrying my yarn in behind. Three, four, and five. I want to switch to my color B because according to my chart, I'm going to work three stitches in my color B. Switch back to my color A. Work five stitches in color A. In color B, work three. And that is the repeat all the way around. Your final two stitches are going to be worked in the color B. So that is in a nutshell how you follow the chart pattern. Oh, I still need some more stitches here. I got ahead of myself. Um, and, uh, and do the color work. So at this time, I'm going to leave you run over to my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. Uh, grab that color chart or you can sort of memorize it from what you see here in the video and uh, work through to round 19 which will give you bring you to the end of your chart and then meet me back here and we will do the decrease rounds and finish off our bobble together. Now at the end of round 19, you will have something that looks like this, hopefully. You can see I've worked my color all the way through on my chart. At this time, you can go and clip any ends that you might want to clip. And you can also fasten off your color B and set it aside, you'll no longer need it. After round 19, we're now going to start our decrease rounds, but before we do that, if you are using your bobble, you're going to want to insert it into the sleeve, just like so. It will be loose around the top, but as we work these final decrease rounds, it is going to tighten around. If you choose not to use one of these plastic bobbles, you can stuff it. I did include alternate instructions in the written pattern on uh, how to finish it off differently if you're going to uh, say use a little bit of fiber fill and stuff your bobble instead of using one of these plastic or uh, ones or upcycle one. So we are now going to pick up then at round 20 in our pattern and for round 20 we're going to continue working in the back loop only and we're going to start by single crocheting two together over the first two stitches. To work your single crochet two together, you're going to insert your hook in the next stitch under the back loop only, yarn over and drop a loop. Insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and draw through all three loops. That is your single crochet two together. Mark that first stitch, and then you're going to single crochet in each of the next six stitches. You're then going to repeat single crochet two together and one in each of the next six. At the end of this round you are going to have a total of 42 stitches. For round 21 working in the back loop only single crochet two together
and then single crochet in each of the next five. You're going to repeat single crochet two together and single crochet in each of the next five. At the end of round 21, you're going to have a total of 36 stitches. For round 22, you're going to single crochet two stitches together over the first two stitches in the back loop only followed by one single crochet in each of the next four stitches. Repeat that all the way around and at the end of this round you will have a total of 30 stitches. For round 23, working in the back loop only, you're going to single crochet two stitches together followed by one single crochet in each of the next three. Repeat that all the way around your bobble and at the end of this round you're going to have a total of 24 stitches. Now for round 24, if you're working around your bobble, this is your final decrease round. You're going to single crochet two together over the first two stitches in the back loop only, and then work one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. Repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, you will have a total of 18 stitches. Now at the end of round 24, you'll have something like this. If you are working around the bobble, this is your final round. Uh, if you are going to be stuffing it with a fiber fill, you're going to continue to your decrease round. So your round 25 would be a single crochet two together, followed by one single crochet in the next stitch, uh, all the way around. And then around 26, where you're working two, a single crochet two together all the way around. Once you have completed your rounds, depending on the design you're working on, you are going to then remove your stitch marker and uh, fasten off. Just work a slip stitch in the next stitch and fasten off, leaving a little bit of a long tail. So just like so. Now this one, it is a little bit uh, looser than some of the other bobble designs I've done because the stitches stretch out quite a bit as um, as you're working on them because of the pattern but uh, the stitches will come back together and uh, just create a nice shape around your bobble just like that then you're going to take your yarn needle thread that long tail through And around the top of your bobble to close it up a little bit, you're simply going to weave your yarn in and out through those top stitches. This is going to create a little bit of a drawstring. You're going to do that all the way around and when you come back to the place where you began, you're just simply going to pull that yarn tight so that it secures it around the mouth of your bobble. I then just made a quick knot close to the top of that bobble and then I wove my yarn around one more time just to uh, weave in my ends a little bit. Trim off my excess tail. Excess tail. Take the top of my bobble and stick it back on. And it is now all ready to hang on my Christmas tree. So thank you so much 
for joining me once again for this tutorial. And again, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, be sure to come back soon. Thank you so much. Happy crocheting. Bye.